We've begun the new year of 2021. As Christian community, we move to the end of the Christmas season. This coming Sunday is called the Baptism of the Lord. Now, among our brothers and sisters of Eastern churches, this is their epiphany. The Magi and his coming as we celebrated last Sunday in the Roman church is an epiphany, true. But this Sunday is also an epiphany. Epiphany means manifestation, revelation. Something takes place at the waters of the Jordan and by the preaching of John the Baptist that in a sense is a real revelation of who Jesus is. It's very interesting if I were to ask you What is the first action or activity of Jesus in the four Gospels? If you would say, well, it's his birth that, of course, has to be narrated or there, that's not true. Because we find in the synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke a very interesting difference. Mark does not have any narration of an angel bringing the message to Mary and the birth at Bethlehem. Luke does have a beautiful story. We well know it's really the center of our Christmas celebration. Matthew has a more, you might say, abbreviated kind of description of the birth of Jesus. And the Gospel of John has none. So two of the Gospels out of the four do not have mention of the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. That doesn't mean it's not true, but it just simply means it wasn't mentioned for some reason or other in the history and tradition of how these Gospels were written, that is what left. But the most important, you might say, event that begins all the Gospels in one way or another is, uh, if not the actual baptism described, a reference to that baptism of Jesus and the preaching of John the Baptist. And in a very particular way, the narration of the baptism of the Lord at the waters of the Jordan is accompanied by a voice from heaven that says, Behold my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And also, that little detail found in the the Gospels too, especially beginning with the Gospel of Mark, of a dove descending. It said, "Like like the Spirit came down upon him like a dove. Very interesting. You might say, at the waters of the Jordan in the baptism of Jesus, we have a very beautiful revelation. Uh, You might say, not this time the angel speaking uh, of the glory of God, not an angel speaking that this is the Son of God, but the voice from heaven, the Father himself saying, Behold my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. That dove is very important too. Because for those who have some sense or remember the Old Testament, where does that dove play a special important role? It plays a role in the end of the flood. When Noah opens the ark, sends out a dove, and the dove comes back with an olive branch in its beak. A long symbol of peace, yes. But it really has a greater significance because it, has the, it indicates the peace of God with humanity after the waters of the flood. Hmm. So after the waters of baptism, the Christian community realizes that we have been renewed and we are at peace with God. And there is a, you might say, a newness of human existence that begins at the rivers, water of the river of Jordan a newness of existence that begins. So you might say it's a beautiful culmination of the the celebration of Christmas, talking about a new birth and a new life in the world, because that new life and new newness is now to be ours through the mystery of this Son of God sent by the Father with the power of the Holy Spirit to share his new life and his new love with all of us. What a beautiful conclusion and finale of the Christmas season is a celebration of the baptism of the Lord at the waters of the Jordan.